Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Strong with Dr. Michael G. Daniels. This is your old C.B. Baker here. Uh, we have, Dr. Daniels, we had took a couple weeks off because you was out of town and, and I was um, extremely busy. But we're going to follow up here today with um, blended families. You know, how we talked about um, the last episode mm-hmm. and uh, with parenting, which everybody seems to have had an opinion on. So uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Daniels. Well, thank you again. It's always great to um, to have an opportunity to to discuss what I think are very important issues. And I, I will say, uh, I think especially in times the times that we're living in now, it is um, uh, more often than not you have blended families um, uh, because of the high divorce rate, and so people are remarrying, and there are you know children um, from either parent or when there are instances where. Uh, there um, maybe not have been a divorce, but where uh, one parent may have had a child prior to getting married, um, where the other spouse is not a biological parent. And, and they do raise special issues. Um, but um, like most things, if you can get back to basics, you, you find that those issues are resolved. Uh, our problem is we tend to not want to get back to basics. Right. Right. So what are some of the things in when you're counseling people, what are some of the the major issues or more consistent Mm -hmm. issues, I should say, with um, people that you counsel that have blended families or blended families together? I I think the the issue that crops up the most is um, when parents tend to have different ideas about disciplining children. Mm. And, And even when they do have the same ideas, then you still have the issue of, well, um, am I able to discipline a non-biological child in the same way that the biological parent does? Uh, right. and, and then there's also the issue of the biological parent that is not in the home. How, how, how does that, how does their ideas about having a non-biological parent, you know, discipline a child? And so you have all those dynamics that come into play. And, and that can cause chaos and it also cause parents to, uh, to tend to walk away from relationships uh, because oftentimes what I get is um, uh, parents will say, well, my children are first and foremost, and um, if um, we can't resolve this, then the relationship is over uh, without giving much thought to the, to, to, to the reality that uh, the child is going to leave anyway. <laughs> You know, it's not like the child be with you forever. Right. And, and while you certainly want to make sure that the child is reared in an appropriate way, that there's no abuse, uh, but you want to take it, take it into consideration because when you take that into consideration, it changes how you view the dynamics and the effort you put into making sure the blended family works. Yeah. I, I, I You know, I can imagine how that would be a, a major issue. It's definitely for the one, the biological parent from the, on the outside, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you hear um, or you see situations where the um, the male is on the outside and he's like, and you, then, you know, him and his baby mom was uh, off and on. But then mm-hmm. when she starts getting serious with someone, then he starts tripping. Is it a is he doing it out of love for the child or is he playing the kids as a pawn in the argument game type mm-hmm. thing? It's, and vice versa with the um, with the with the mothers as well. Right. You know, you see that a lot. So what's some of the things that you could use to combat that? Sure. And, and I'll say this, you know, even though, you know, I have run across where there are some some biological fathers that uh, don't like the idea of another man raising their son. Um, that that tends to be a, uh, a small, very small percentage. Because uh, a lot of times the biological father just kind of, you know, walks away. You know, he has to be forced back into parenting. Right. Um, but on the other hand, it's when you find the child being used as a pawn. Because oftentimes, you know, the biological mothers will say things like, well, I don't want that woman raising my child. I don't want that woman touching my child. Uh, and so they're the ones that tend to have more of a problem with the child being involved, you know, uh, and, and if the child ever calls the non-biological mother, mother, oh, all hell going to break loose <laughs> then <laughs> that, yeah, that you can, yeah, you can yeah. bang. So, I mean, so what is the basics? You know, the, the irony of it is it is really very simple uh, in that one of the problems is on what you have blended families is that they don't act like a family. Yeah, mm-hmm. Not in the true sense. Right. They act like a, a family um, that has splinters. 
Yeah, you know, because if you think about it, um, if you have a, a a child in your home, you know, what is the difference between having an adopted child and having a child that is not yours because of, you know, a situation where your, your spouse had children before y'all married? Mm-hmm. Now, if there are two parents and they decide to go and adopt a child together, they wouldn't treat that child as if mm-hmm. it was a blended family. Right, that's <laughs> they would right. treat that child as if it was their own biological child. And so that's really what you have is when 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 families don't don't really operate as a family, then that tends to cause difficulty throughout their relationship, you know. Um, and so that's what I try to do is is help families to get operate like a family in in, 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 in a biblical sense, you know. And, and the Bible is clear on how that should work, you know. You know, for example, you know, uh, uh, the Bible says that uh, wives should submit themselves unto their own husband uh, a- as unto the Lord. Now, I realize that a lot of um, women have difficulty with, with that concept. Right. And that's because they don't understand what submission is. It says as unto the Lord. Uh, and I would venture to say that most women... Uh, when they submit to God, it is not a unilateral submission. <laughs> it's not like they do everything the Bible teaches them to do. Right. And similarly, it says that for husbands, uh, for them to love their wives and to be not bitter against them, uh, which um, says that, you know, that their love for them should be in a way where they also um, don't get to the point where they're upset all the time about the little things. Now, when it concerns parenting, uh, the scripture is clear. It says that for the, that the husband uh, and the way that he treats the children um, should be in a way that he does not provoke the children to wrath. All right. And of course, it says for children to obey your parents. So if the scripture says for children to obey your parents, then that means that the biological parent has an obligation, which is to let their child know that they have that the requirement to obey the non-biological parent is always a part of the family life. But that doesn't always happen, and that can be a part of the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially if, if, especially when the situation is, if the child wasn't raised completely great mm-hmm. in, you know, in the first early years, and then a divorce happens, and then say, you know, the mother or the father gets their life together, you know, and they get back on the right track. But now this child is not, let's just go ahead and I'll put it, they're wild. Right. And you see, know, it's almost like baby and kids. So right. how, how do you how do you handle a situation like that? Like, this is not my, you know, you know, these are not my kids. Mm-hmm. It's not, my, is it really my issue? Or should I really put forth the best effort possible to get them to understand that I am a parent? Well, and no, that's why I said, uh, uh, what I said originally about, we have to be what the Bible says we're going to be, right? How can I be as a parent, let's say a father, how can I be the head of my household if the children are not subject to my authority as a parent? Your point. You know, then I'm not really the head. And and how can my wife function the way the Bible says she ought to function if, if, if the situation is reversed, uh, when the scripture says that her responsibility is to manage the home? How can she really manage the home? How can the children call her blessed if she is, you know, walking away from her duty to to also um, supervise the children that are mine biologically and not hers? So if I'm going to be um, the husband or the wife that the Bible outlines that I should be, I, I really have an obligation um, to to live up to that role by also ensuring that the children understand that role. As well. And so both parents really have to instill that. The problem often is, as you said earlier, is that what if we have different parenting styles? What if one parent, you know, believes that children ought to just get everything they want? And one parent says, no, I think you should work for what you want. Right. So how do you reconcile that? See, the issue is not a parenting issue. The issue is a um, holding down your role as a, uh, uh, um, a husband or wife issue. See, that's really the issue, Mm -hmm. because let's say um, the wife believes in being lenient and let's say the husband does not believe in being lenient. Well, uh, two things come into play. The husband is head of the household. Right. So if he says that, hey, 
you know, this is how we're going to respond to um, infractions, let's say, of the household rules. Right. Then he's head of the household. It's not you, the parent. I'm head of the household, so therefore that's what it is. But the inf- but but how you deal with it has to be done in a way that the child does not become bitter against you nor the wife. And so that's how you have to you know gauge that. And so for me, um, as a parent, uh, my philosophy was always simple: let's engage the child in what the punishment will be ahead of time. So everybody knows ahead of time. Right. You know, if you break this infraction. This is the punishment. And I'll always give you one. You know, I'll give you one warning. This is the punishment. Let's agree on the punishment. You know, and that way, if you do break it, we've already, everyone has already agreed that these are the rules of the house. If you break that infraction, then this is how we're going to resolve it. And so based on that, uh, now I'm not saying people don't get a little upset when it truly happens, but... At least there's no bitterness because we all agreed on it. Right, right. You know? you know, all the guesswork is out, is out of there, and then all the emotion is out of there because it's facts. Either you, you broke the rule, and this is the consequence. Right, and and I'm not mad at you because see, and that's the other thing I think that we have to like what scripture says: fathers, you treat your children so that they don't uh, you don't cause them to be angry against you, and that is because my philosophy was always: I don't I sh- I don't need to be angry with you for breaking a rule. Because everybody breaks rules. And you know what? Just like, let's say if I'm going, if I'm driving down um, one of the uh, highways, and the speed limit is 55. If I choose to do 65, I chose <laughs> to break the rule. That's right. And if the, if the state trooper pulls me over, I don't want him to be angry with me. Right. I don't want him to yell at me. I want him to, you know, I, you know, you you speeding. That's why I pulled you, and this is the ticket, and you know, and and we move on. If he's angry and yelling at me, then really, that's when I become bitter against policemen, mm-hmm. because you didn't just give me a ticket, but you also uh, went beyond what you really should be doing. So the same thing as a parent. If I'm going to um, punish my child, whether it be my biological child, whether it be a blended family. I'm not going to be angry with you because you broke the rule because you have a right to be disobedient. You have a right to be disobedient, even though it's not right to be disobedient. Right. You know, you have a right to go to hell, for example. That's <laughs> right. your prerogative. Right. You have a right to go to jail. <laughs> you know, that's your prerogative. Um, but I'm not saying you, it is right to do it. I'm just saying in the free society, that's just the way life is. So if my child breaks a rule, I'm not mad. It's just here is what we're going to do because of it. And then we're done. Let's have a good time. Let's move on. Okay. So now um, you have a situation to where um, your two two parents are there. Mm-hmm. And you obviously you can see it that they're treating their children better than they're treating your, your children. Mm-hmm. Where like how we just got through talking about the, the punishment, everything was laid out. But then you see that the punishment isn't isn't fitting, mm-hmm. and for the other children, that is not the body. You know, it's a little bit harsher mm-hmm. or or more lenient, so to mm-hmm. speak. How does that conversation happen between the parents to 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 get past something like that? Well, again, uh, the conversation, in my opinion, should never take place um, while the punishment is being laid out. That that's one thing, uh, because again, again, I go right back to the scripture where it says, "What wives submit yourselves, and husbands love your wives, uh, but don't become bitter, you know, against them." Uh, so again, people call it parenting. The parenting is not the problem. The problem is living as a biblical wife or biblical husband. That's the real problem. So let's say um, I'm the husband and I have a, you know, a child that I brought into the relationship and um, her, my, my son and her son are playing and they break the television set for the house somehow, throwing a ball, crack mm-hmm. the screen. Now, her son gets time out and um, my son um, gets corporal punishment. Okay. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Right. I mean, but let's just say that's <laughs> right. what happens, right? Right. Now, if I now go off on my wife, I am I am becoming bitter against her. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says to love her, but not be bitter against her. So if I'm not gonna be bitter against her, I have to approach it in a way that 
that lets her know, but also kept, lets me know that I have an understanding as to why she did what she did. Okay. So I have to be looking at what would make her give corporate punishment to my child and just give her child time out. Is she thinking that my child was the instigator? Is she think that before my child came, that none of this kind of thing, you know, would happen? What was the basic rule that we laid out anyway? So rather than make it a point of the children, I got to make it a point of us agreeing on what we're going to do and making sure we follow our rules. And so like in this case, she may say, well, we didn't talk about what we would do, you know, if that happened. We don't, but we can talk about whether or not corporal punishment will be allowed in our family, right. you know? And so that's what we deal with. You know, will we go forward with corporal punishment? And if so, how are we determined how to do it? Because one thing, again, remember the scripture says about fathers, when you do chastise your children, it should be done so in a way that you don't provoke them to anger. So that means that if I'm going to do corporal punishment, um, which I'm, I'm not really a strong advocate of, but let's just say, you know, people are, it has to be done in a way where it seems to be fair. It has to be fair. And so even at that, they we have to go ahead of time. And I, and I, 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 I um, refer to my father's methodology, um, which I thought he was a, a very wise man when it came to that. Maybe not early on, but as we got older, at least with me, he was anyway, I should say. You knew ahead of time, he would say things like this. Um, I Just like I get paid on Friday, you're going to get paid on Friday. So you might do something on Monday. You're right. You get paid on Friday. <laughs> you know? Right. You know? And, and and so you knew what the infractions were gonna bring. But you could also get good time. Right. And so you could mess up on Monday. And by Thursday, you could have done enough good things to wipe it out. You know? And so when I was younger, sometimes I thought it was not fair because my stepsisters would always wipe theirs out. <laughs> Right. And so now I think it wasn't fair. As I got older, I realized what he was really doing. He was causing you to punish yourself. So, like, what they would do is they would clean the house. You know, mm-hmm. of course, we didn't want, my, my stepper and I, we didn't want to clean the house. They would clean the house. They might, you know, uh, you know, volunteer to cook or, you know, different things, iron clothes. They would do different things to get good time. But they really were punishing themselves right. for their act. And I'm older, I understand that. Now, isn't that a better way? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so the child themselves re- recognize they're wrong and they put themselves on punishment. Yeah. And it's also similar to life mm-hmm. because when you do stuff wrong, it don't just happen right then, the negative consequence. Mm-hmm. But then if you recognize, oh, I, I messed up on that, but now I got a chance to, you know, make up for it. Right. You know, right. to try to ease it, ease the consequence back or even wipe it out altogether. Mm-hmm. See, I, I think a part of it is that with um, the non-biological parent, oftentimes they look at the behavior as being purposeful, as if the person is being resentful. Mm-hmm. So let's say if, not, the non, if, if my son broke the TV, the thought will be, he did it purposefully, where with her son, it was an accident, you know. So we tend to judge the intent behind the other child, most of my own child, because I thought is, well, my child wouldn't do anything to harm me. What do you think causes that? Um, because we don't follow the Bible. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's really the, the bottom line. It, 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 it's because, you know, most parents don't like the reality that is all children are alike. You know, it doesn't matter who the child is. But, you know, that thought process is the same. Like if I let you borrow a power washer mm-hmm. and then you break it, the first thing that's going to pop in my head is like you you broke it because you knew it wasn't yours. Right. You know, so is that the same type of mentality? Yeah, right. You didn't, take, you didn't take due care when it probably is the opposite. I probably would have took greater care if I borrow your stuff right. than if I borrow my, you know, if I use my own, because it's mine. I, you know, I'm not worried about me getting mad at me for breaking it, you right. know. And but that's kind of like our thought process. The other thing is, uh, I think, and I mentioned this when we talked before, is because parents don't like to accept that love is not about protecting all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, if I love my child, I want to protect my child. Well, you don't have to protect your child from consequence of the action to show love. In fact, it should be the opposite. 
A child should experience the consequences of their actions so they will know that there are consequences and so they won't continue to do wrong. No one can love us as much as our Heavenly Father. No one. And he does not shield us from the consequences of our actions. No. In, in we, fact, mm-hmm. he lets us experience them so we can learn. Yeah. Now, one thing you mentioned at the, um, that I wanted to talk about is a communication factor. Epi- you know, a couple mm-hmm. episodes ago in the, in the marriage relationship series, we talked about the communication. Mm-hmm. And we talked about how when you get together in a relationship that you got to have that foundation of communication and have, have those meetings and, and talk about the difficult things, but in, in a nice safe area, mm-hmm. this is the subject of one of the subjects that needs to be talked about in that nice safe area. When you, before you get married, you know, you know, while you are in the courtship or dating and like, what's your thoughts on parenting and, and disciplining your kids? If, if they have kids and you have kids and you're looking to get married at some point. Absolutely. You know, uh, when I do premarital counseling, that is one of the areas that I cover. And that is blending. The, you know, how do you blend the family? And so you want to talk about things like, you know, how you discipline, how I discipline. Who's going to be the primary disciplinarian? you know, for the children. And the thing that I tell parents is that is, is this, there should not be two different primary disciplinarians. It shouldn't be, I discipline my children, you discipline your children, because now we're not acting as a family. Mm-hmm. We're acting as two separate entities living in the same house. So whoever the primary disciplinarian is, that person should always be the primary disciplinarian. Now, that doesn't mean we can't discuss the issue together. You know, we can always discuss what goes on, what does not go on, and talk about, well, you know, we're, are we really going to give them punishment this time? We can discuss that. But whoever that primary person is should always be that primary person so that everybody in the household will know we are a family and this is how we do business. Right. And so if, if, if it's done that way, it takes away the sense of favoritism. <laughs> right. Because I can easily see that happening. If you had a, a situation where I discipline my kids and you discipline your kids, and then if I'm strict or, you know, then my kids will look up, look over there and look at their step brother and sister mm-hmm. like, well, that didn't happen over there. Mm-hmm. Why well, I getting this? And then they're mad at me. It just creates a whole bunch of resentfulness and bitterness throughout the whole family. A- a- absolutely. And rightfully so, if that's, if that's what's going on. Um, you know, so I, again, you know, I, I think that, and, and the Bible supports this, is that all families, in a sense, are blended, in in a, in, a, in a sense. Because here's the thing, for for every father, you become a father after the child is born. For every mother, you were a mother at the moment of conception. You know, you you feel the child. You right. know the child. Right. We we have to get to know the child. Right. You know, the the mother feels a sense of I must protect you from the moment the child is conceived. The father kind of feels that later on, and and so the viewpoints are somewhat different. Mm-hmm. There are biological mothers that don't want biological fathers to discipline children. Right. You know, because they were raised differently in their households, you know. And so even if it's a a, a non-blended family, um, the idea of how we're going to discipline our children, how we're going to raise our children need to be on the table up, up front. Because uh, I tell you, that can tear any family apart uh, when one spouse is hovering and covering for a child. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a big issue. And I'm glad we covered this uh, topic, uh, Dr. Daniels. Um, is there anything else you'd like to mention or bring to the table before we close out? Well, I'll just say this, too, because I, I can tell you, because you know, when I'm counseling, uh, you know, ladies, here's what I find. That the idea of competing, you know, mothers feeling like they had to compete with their daughters for the affection of their husbands. Mm. Not, 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 not because the husband, there was any hanky panky going on with the daughter, but right. just, you know, be, be, because they, they kind of, and so that competition is there and that calls, you know, a little distance, you know, at, t- at times. Um, daughters trying to please fathers, um, uh, th- this kind of thing. And so whether it's a blended family or not, the way you rear your children can cause a lot of problems in your marriage. And so that's why it's extremely important 
that that parents always engage uh, one another, as you said early on, but often that should be a part of the intimate conversation that mm-hmm. we're going to have so we can get to know each other, so we can understand why we feel the way we feel. Because a lot of times, you know, we don't tell the other party why we feel that way. And then if you do tell, people tend to get upset when you tell them why you feel that way. And so then there's more distance as opposed to um, appreciating the fact that you feel close enough to tell me that you think there is a problem in the way we parent together so we can become better. Yeah. And one thing's one thing's for sure, if you're being intimate with your spouse, Mm -hmm. you know, at all times, you usually ain't gonna have no issue with that. It's much easier um, in that in that regard. Um, the, The 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 problem arises in that most people, and I say this, you know, I've been in counseling since 1989, most people are afraid of intimacy. Um, because not, not true intimacy. Most people don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear what makes them feel good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Dr. Daniels. This is Joe C.B. Baker. Till next time.